Hello everybody, welcome back for another video, hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day, happy November, happy November 1st, this year is flying by, it is going to be January 1st before we all know it, as always, a really fun way to support the channel is by leaving a like, by leaving a comment, or by subscribing if you are new here. And without further ado, let's jump all right into it. At the moment, for some reason, and I think I know why, the, the only thing really in the price news is Bitcoin. It says Bitcoin closes above $60,000 for the third week Running up October, as no one called it, closes at a record month high in best month is the best month, best month, geez Louise, of 2021. And it's really weird. Every single video, if you pay attention within the first, I think, three minutes, I always do that thing. And I don't know why. It's kind of freaking me out. Like the first three minutes of every video, I always have this thing where I talk like that for a couple of seconds and then it kind of goes away. Uh, five things to watch in Bitcoin this week, basically, if the price goes up or not. Not even joking. Um, we are currently at the point right now, remember in September, where we were discussing that a lot of analysts kept on saying that October, November, and December were going to be the months around spring, even before spring. We had a lot of news that quarter four of this year would be spectacular. It would be amazing. It would be astronomical. And that's when we were having, I mean, every single video, at least at the beginning during the price part, was just discussing exactly how high Bitcoin's price was going to go. And that's when we were getting all the 200, 300, you know, so and so thousand dollar uh, price per Bitcoin. So now that we are officially in November, everyone is going to be paying attention and you can only assume that there's going to be a tidal wave avalanche of an enormous amount of price predictions for Bitcoin, especially as this year appears to be basically mimicking 2017. It says Bitcoin is becoming like a giant Pac-Man. This was said by a senior commodity strategist. Bitcoin is still fine and moving towards $90,000. This was said by a crypto expert. Bitcoin bull market second leg. Now in motion, analyst plan B expects extended $135,000 run this year within the next eight weeks, if you can believe it. Yeah, I know. When you, when you say we have two months left, you go, oh, that's a long time. But when you think about it in weeks, eight weeks is not a long amount of time at all. We are now. I told you. We would have no choice. I told you in the past that in the future we would have no choice because time continues forward. So all we have to do is basically sit here and see if all of these predictions actually come true. We are now at the point where if we mimic 2017 perfectly because we've I mean it's it's all on point. We've gone over this before. There was a run up at the beginning of the year, a move down in the summer of 2017, a slight move up in September, and then October we moved up in October in November and December in 2017 were the months uh, we got to the point where by the end of November 2017, uh, everyone or a lot of people were into the market. And the thing that really triggered it was Thanksgiving. For those of you who do not know, Thanksgiving is typically the last Thursday of November. Pretty sure I got that correct. Uh, and what basically happened was is everyone on Wednesday was making tons of money. On Thursday, they went to their families and basically bragged. No other way to really say that. And by Friday, everyone who had been bragged to was desperately trying to get into the market. Um, I am not in the States anymore, but boy, howdy, did I notice a lot of my family messaging me on Friday asking me about this Bitcoin and how to get into it. Uh, a lot of people on that Friday. So yeah, um, and then on top of that, it says PayPal co-founder reveals the reason behind increasing Bitcoin price. It's, it's money. People want to make money. Everyone's heard the exact same thing the entirety of this year. We Even since last year, you remember when we had the actual Bitcoin halving? And that entire year, we kept on hearing 2021, 2021, 2021 as the actual pew, year when things would kind of go completely insane for prices. And it came true thus far, uh, but we still do not have that 100,000. We don't have the 75,000, uh, $100,000 Bitcoin. $135,000 Bitcoin, which I think we're going to actually completely pass by 
and I and I dare say the the illustrious two hundred and fifty thousand dollar Bitcoin, uh, which is what a Swiss bank announced years ago, Bitcoin would have to hit to be able to be large enough to potentially usurp and pass by and kind of push to the side the U.S. dollar. I, I think in general people are getting into the cryptocurrency market. Of course, money, uh, but it's because we, as not actual monetary experts, uh, can see prices rising. We see on the news that inflation is actually there, and when we know, we know that when they announce that inflation is there, we know that it's typically a lot worse than it actually is. A lot of people are shifting around their investments quite rapidly, and I don't mean just out of gold. I mean, even from the idea of real estate. I was having a, a walk with my friend. Hello, friend, if you're watching. And we were, um, you've seen them before, like when you walk by certain um, uh, real estate or estate agents, they'll have, you know, the thing in the window and they have like 15 different properties, you know, and we were looking at them, we're looking at some of the prices, but a lot of times they'll even show exactly um, how much of a return you can get on these properties. So it'll say, this place is listed at 700000 and there's a renter inside of it and, you know, they have a whatever contract and yada, yada, so you, you're buying the place rented, which is kind of like the dream. But they'll have beneath it that your yearly return, yearly return from owning said property with a tenant inside of it is anywhere between 4 to 6%. I think like 15 years ago, that would have been like, you know, that's really stable, great income, yada, yada. But then we were discussing, like we, we laughed walking down the street because I, I love the idea of property. I'm still going to buy property just as like a, I love the stability, if you will. I like owning the actual physical thing. I'm sure a lot of you understand exactly what I'm talking about, uh, but it's no longer my main goal because even if now this is not financial advice, this is simply me explaining to you how I'm living out portions of my life. When I invest into cryptocurrencies, when I invest into NFTs, and I, and I mean this in the most honest way, you can put a thousand into an NFT, and I've seen, I mean, the week later, it's at 50,000. Once again, not financial advice. You can put money into Bitcoin, XRP, Ethereum, Solana, it really doesn't matter at this point, and you're up by 18% in one day. That 18% would have literally taken you three years for the rental return from the place that you purchased. And a lot of times, I, I mean, even years ago, I used to see people dumping huge amounts of, of money into the market. And I mean like 100000 150000 like enough to buy like a small studio. And then certain coins go up by 7,000% that year. And you're like, what was the point of even thinking of investing in real estate? So anyway, um, I, I, I think a lot of people are coming to the conclusion that... Things are digital. They're going to continue to be digitized. And the digital space is kind of what people have to move into. I think the really weird shift for me is going to be when we start seeing people uh, bragging about that they own real estate. And you're like, show me a picture. And they show you it like in a metaverse. Because we all know that it's going to happen. People already brag about the NFTs that they have and the other, you know. Uh, the the First of all, don't ever brag or tell anyone about the amount of crypto that you have. That is your business and no one else's. You think I'm joking? It's not a joke. That is your business and no one else's. But you understand what I'm saying. There's always going to be somebody who brags about that kind of stuff. Uh, but when people start bragging about digital things, I think that's going to be the point where people will prefer to actually own digital land. As a Anyway, so that's what that guy said. What is this one? Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Oh, also, really, I saw two websites talking about this, and I'm trying to figure out what world they're living in. For those of you not looking at the screen, it says Bitcoin is undergoing a correction, falls to less than $59,000. Uh, for some reason, and I don't, uh, the idea of a correction means we got too hot too fast. Bitcoin hit 65,000, way too hot. Bitcoin falls back down to 52,000 just to make sure that there's like a proper price support level bottom, whatever word you want to call it. And therefore we can bounce off of that and kind of move back up. Bitcoin falling by like $1,300 over the course of, 36 hours is not a correction. And also, we're back above that already. At the time of me making this video, Bitcoin's near $62,000, I think, once again. I think a lot of times, my opinion, uh, cryptocurrency websites love the idea of drama and being able to tell people, oh boy, you better watch out. Because a lot of times I notice certain websites don't post at all unless there's something really dramatic to talk about. They'll make sure 
that they talk about the SEC. They make sure that they talk about the World Bank trying to restrict people from getting into crypto. But and and I and I, and I ask myself sometimes who actually runs a lot of these uh, cryptocurrency websites. Don't assume that because they're they're a crypto website that they're uh, you know there for the market. There are tons of products, especially traditional products, that are in the cryptocurrency space that are made to actually make Bitcoin lose price. Anyway, um, not an enormous amount of price news. Everything was just focused on Bitcoin. There was some Ethereum news, which I think we're going to get into in the next couple of seconds. I'm not really sure if I put... Yeah, no, I have it aside here. Um, and then besides that... Uh, wait, there we go. Uh, for those of you not looking at the screen, it says retail is here. That is to say retail investors, people who are not wealthy. It says they're just buying Shiba Inu instead of Bitcoin. Um usually one of the main metrics that we would use, especially back since 2016, 2017, to see the, the growth of the cryptocurrency market or the next movement of the market would be through Google Trends. And you would see how many people on the, on the course of a day were actually Googling the word Bitcoin, Litecoin, and you'd be able to kind of tell which coin was going to kind of pump. Uh, and the idea has been for at least this year, that as in 2017, uh, retail investors were one of the main reasons why Bitcoin actually shot up to 20,000. It was this kind of fervor. Everyone was like, I have to have a piece. And that the more pieces you buy, the more whole Bitcoin you buy. And therefore, the price ends up going up. Uh, but it says they're just buying Shiba Inu. I, I think the, the meme coin space, so it's not just Shiba. It's also Dogecoin and another coin that's currently floating around out there. Um, and even like some of the like weirder altcoins are kind of getting all the attention, which lets me know once again that we are mimicking 2017. The idea is, and here's something that you haven't heard me say in a while. The idea is crypto vanity. Crypto vanity is basically why would I want to own 0.00001 of a Bitcoin when I can own 47 million Shiba Inu. How do you brag to people? We live in a very braggy society. You may not think so. If you have an Instagram, you know exactly what I'm talking about. People brag about their shoelaces, about what kind of car they drive, about the kind of wheels on their car, what kind of house they have. It's, it's constantly you have to show other people that you have it, even when some people don't. So in 2017, it was the, the larger cap that is to say, uh, you know, number, but actual larger, the word isn't population, circulating supply that started to really bump up in price. Um, and this is why me and my, and, and I told you this was about a week ago when we were getting all the Shiba Inu news. I think, I am not certain, I do not know the future. It feels like Shiba Inu is kind of the XRP of this year. It's this coin with a very large circulating supply, a very fierce and ferocious group of people behind it who really believe in the project. A lot of people saying there's no way it can ever hit that price. The price continues rising every single day. It has passed by competitors in 2017. It was XRP trying to pass by Lumens, which it did. And now we have Shiba Inu trying to pass by Dogecoin, which it did. I think it's Dogecoin is now coin number 10 and Shiba Inu, I believe right now is number eight. Not to spend too much time on Shiba Inu once again, uh, but you understand the trend. If you've been here for four years, you might be shaking your head up and down because you understand exactly what's going on. It's a little eerie. It's a little weird. I assume in 2025, we're going to be having the same exact discussion with like suitcase coin. And we're going to be like, well, in 2021, Shiba Inu was doing it. Anyway, that's basically all the price news floating around right now. Everything is hyper Bitcoin focused. I think we should have a very good idea as to how the next two months are going to go by the time we are midway through this month. I mean, nearing Thanksgiving, it should be abundantly clear if we are at an eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 something or other Bitcoin. I forgot. Um, I remember my, um, I, I, I saw Plan B's chart, like actually visualized because he has, you know, that really weird wacky chart, but like actually number wise as to where we should be by certain points. And I think it was the end of this month that we would be near or above $90,000, if I am not mistaken. Anyway, yeah, that's all the price news. A lot of excitement going on. I'm sure you can feel it in the air. And without further ado, let's move on. 
In one of the most popular news stories of the day, it says celebrating the seminal Bitcoin white paper, Satoshi Nakamoto published 13 years ago today. It says 14 hours ago, but you understand. I believe Halloween was the date where the white paper was released. And we started seeing emails from Satoshi Nakamoto. For those of you who were wondering, those are what, um, if you go to Rarible, those are what my latest uh, NFTs actually are celebrating the event. Um, yeah, 13 years. It doesn't, maybe it even seems longer than that. It, it feels like Bitcoin has kind of always been there, but like as if, no. It, it feels like it's been here for at least 30 something years because we're constantly talking about it, but that is also relatively new and trying to get its foothold in the world if that kind of makes any sense. A lot of people were very excited about this. There were like articles talking about people having like celebrations. I don't, I was going to assume that people weren't actually having physical celebrations, but people celebrate everything nowadays. So I'm somewhere in the world, there was like an actual party with like 300 people. I can, I can just kind of feel it. So cool. Um, yeah, I guess that's also maybe the bit of energy that moves forward as people go, hey, it's the anniversary. Therefore, we have to, Buy some up in solidarity. I have no idea. Yeah. 13 years. Absolutely insane. And let's move on. Also very popular in the news. Uh, this number was lower a couple of days ago, of course, logically. But I find it funny how high that it has jumped. It says 87 days ago, the Ethereum network successfully implemented the London hard fork. And ever since then, over 700,000 Ether has been burned or more than $2.4 billion using today's rates. The last time we discussed this, I think exactly $1 billion worth of Ether had been burned. That was like six or so odd weeks ago. Uh, the rate of burn is accelerating quite fast. A lot of people are very excited. We just had the Altair upgrade. We had London. We had Berlin. Uh, all that's left, I once again, I believe is the Ice Age. And then after that, it is the actual merge taking place. There are a lot of articles once again floating around. I'm, gonna, I'm going to assume that we're going to see them surfacing more and more about the, um, what's it called? Ethereum being properly deflationary. Ethereum having no network fees, uh, 1,100 million transactions per second. It's not that far off at this point, and it's building up a lot of excitement within the market. Don't forget, uh, alongside the $185,000, $250,000 Bitcoin uh, predictions, we were also getting predictions for a $10,000, $12,000, $15,000, and $35,000 Ether around the exact same time, whether those are going to happen. I'm not sure, but it seems slightly believable if we keep burning this many coins, Ethereum has eventually zero transaction fees, hundreds of thousands of transactions per second, and the network usage continues as it currently is. So yeah, uh, never forget, the institutions are also buying up as much Ether as possible. Uh, they want to make sure that they secure those 32 Ether for themselves, as was the discussion last year, uh, to be able to make sure to um, mine, create Ether on their own. Yeah. Yeah. This was slightly popular news. I only have one tab open. You know, you don't need nine tabs to know how much Ether is being burned. Quite interesting. I, I wonder exactly where we will be by this time next summer. It's going to be a massive amount of Ether. Also, in the news over the entire weekend, I don't know if I already went over this. I honestly can't remember. I remember saying GameStop. I remember saying the letters AMC. And I've said Shiba Inu at least 148 times over the last seven days. None of that is a joke. I mean that seriously. It says AMC Theaters considers accepting Shiba Inu alongside Dogecoin as SHIB popularity soars. The CEO of World's... Really? The world's largest, is it really, is AMC the largest? Wow, okay. AMC Entertainment is asking the crypto community whether his company should accept Shiba Inu for payments. The company is already planning to accept several cryptocurrencies by year end, including Dogecoin. Um, yeah, 
Very popular news. This was one of the news stories all over the place. It it dragged across the entire weekend. So usually I look back to see if I miss any type of news. And this is how we get news I missed. Um, this was everywhere over the course of the last like three or four days. This is why I don't remember if we actually went over this. But once again, Shiba Inu is in the news. Um, I Oh yeah, oh my gosh. There was also other Shiba Inu news. Like we're apparently getting to the point where there's so many uh, names on the petition for Robin Hood to accept uh, Shiba Inu. People are really, I mean, predicting a, a two or three cent Shiba Inu coin if Robin Hood accepts it and if AMC accepts it. And there was also, oh my gosh, there's so much going on. There was something else with Elon Musk. I think he announced something for Dogecoin, but it had no effect on Dogecoin's price. And people are like, well, he should have been talking about Shiba Inu. I think if Elon Musk even mentions the word Shiba Inu, I think Shiba Inu's price would also go up. So as it stands right now, I see no reason why AMC would not accept it. Sure, why not? Uh, one of the most popular news stories of the day. Go for it. I'm pretty sure he would get extra fans and tons of people would be using it and tons of people would love it. But yeah, let's move on. Next up, uh, this entire first two paragraphs are written very oddly. Um, Cardano saw the total ADA staked on its network hit a new high of 73% on Thursday. An impressive number compared to the number of coins staked on its direct competitors. Uh, the amount of Cardano staked on their network continues to rise. I think the highest we ever saw was, I think... I think it was 80, 81, 82, somewhere around that number. It dipped, but it still is incredibly high. Uh, this was around the time when Cardano initiated staking, and they were talking about that compared to um, Ethereum, I think, which had like 16% staked. In e in e in e the, well, and the Cardano people were like, oh, look how much coins we have in our network. That's actually pretty major. There's only a, you know another portion of the actual Cardano coins that aren't staked, I assume, Assumption that there's something in the works by the IOHK people or the Cardano people to stake even more, to have more inside the network because the less that there is circulating, the higher the price ends up going for the project. Um, but yeah, also was quite big news over the weekend. A lot of the other news about Cardano, at least right now, has to do with Charles Hoskinson like not picking fights with people, but he kind of responds to everything that's said about him. Like, if he's walking down the street in Crocs and someone's like, oh, those Crocs are red, he kind of like responds and like, you know, red is a very nice color. And sometimes orange isn't always the color for people. And I'm like, you don't have to angrily respond to every single... I mean, sometimes there's like three articles per day with him responding to criticism. So anyway, I think there's another Cardano upgrade coming. Uh, it's not as popular, if you will, compared to the last one. Um, everyone basically, I think the, the one that people are discussing that I do not think is going to happen anytime soon is, is the burn mechanism for Cardano. I think the idea behind Cardano is that it's meant to be used as an actual currency and simply not be burned away to increase its value, but only time will tell. If everyone else initiates a burn, you'd better believe. I'm terrified to see what would happen to Bitcoin's price. If someone created an algorithm or a program that after you purchase something, like 1% of the Bitcoin was simply burned or sent to like a burn address, I shudder to think how high Bitcoin's price would actually go. That's the Cardano news. And also, um, to finish things off, in news that I think we were supposed to care about, but no one actually does... It says Wharton University, that is W-H-A-R-T-O-N University in Pennsylvania, is apparently they're going to have a blockchain class and they're going to accept Bitcoin uh, for the class. I assume, because there's always one, there's going to be one person who signs up for this class paying in Bitcoin. They're going to regret it some years down the line. Uh, I think the, cr the the class itself is $3,800. For those of you who are unaware, uh, you know that university is free in many other countries around the world and uh, master's programs as well in English are free around the world. I had that discussion with many friends years ago and zero of them listened to me. And a lot of my friends are 300,000 plus in school debt. So in case anybody was wondering... 
Yeah, school is actually free in many other places around the world, in great places, beautiful places around the world. So just, you know, just throwing that out there because I, I know sometimes people don't know the information. Anyway, so yeah, I... Sure, why not? Um, this has happened across many other universities. I assume... Whenever things like this happen, this isn't being done because someone's like, you know what, we should we should let the Bitcoin millionaires have a chance to, to be able to learn more about blockchain. These are meant to be ways for them to get into the news to try and trick you to spend your cryptocurrency on their class that you can do somewhere else for free or even online for free. Um, so yeah, cool. Uh, and, and it says crypto invades the educational sector. No. For those of you who have been here for the last couple of years, do you remember when we had news uh, that nearly every um, Ivy League and what are they called? What's the other thing? The 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 the, the Browns, the Harvards, the Yales, uh, that they all have crypto in, endowments and they've been collecting and buying cryptocurrencies for a number of years. You can look it up. If you don't believe me, Google it right now. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, this is just a way for them to try and acquire more Bitcoin by getting into the news. Uh, don't... Don't don't spend your Bitcoin on that. Anyway, ba da ba ba da ba ba da. Forgot my phone once again. Got it. Okay. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters, Professor Wally from Gun Bot University, and let's move on. Chris, Hakeem Wilkins, Empire Queen, Stake It with Valor, Fud, Wiser, Mortified, Roman, Geba, Bitcoin, Ben Arachno, Dave, Tony Ambroski, The Dealer's Den, Red Plump, Tomato, Umnu, Wish Nikki, The Letter M, Stefan Dirks, Not Brain, Captain Something in the Z-Way, Lay Crypto, Black Sheep. AJ Cut 5, Speedy 655, and Carlos Was Like, Mobile Razi, Jojo Shaw Show, VB Nerd 21, Miguel Grillet, Lauren De Silva, Quarter Bitty, Bare Bones Mining, Troy, All Good, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Panther Noster, Conan, Don't Skip, Leg Day, Snacky Chan, Tolik Banana, Suspicious Agile, and Blockchain, Navarro Williams, David James, Attila the Han, Yasha Harari, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Phone Scroll Down, Martin Stoyo, Nostromo, John Sarsen, The Anima Reader, Ibibiophobia, Todd, Mullis, Adam, Grasic, Moha Maroney, Mass Adventures in Thailand, Jared Schneider, Wise Knight, Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Cold E3D, Damien, Setsuna, Rich Richard Third, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Nick Manja, Levody, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller, Hitch Test, Every Day, and Cow Skips, Leg Day, Yes to Crypto, Body Big Boat Face, Anytime Fitness, Mouse Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger and Macho Nissan, On Crypto with Lionel, Crayola Michelle, URL, and Bolero Bastos. Thank you all very, very much for your continued support. Thank you to all the new Patreon members. Hello out there to you. I see more of you every single day. Thank you to everyone who left a like, a comment, has subscribed, or is new here. I'm not really sure what to say there. Thank you for all the NFT support. Um, a lot of people have been asking. Once again, it's just me on the project. It is I'm doing everything, and I have other things going on, so I'm sorry that I'm not as quick as I should be. For those of you, I see people asking. I'm sorry that I cannot respond back to all the messages. I see a lot of them. I do apologize. Um, it is after um, all the buddy bears... Um, it is after, or actually starting from bear number 777, they are minted on Solana, and therefore the network fees are uh, low, non-existent, compared to Ethereum. I am going to be making a dedicated um, social media platform, as in uh, like a, a Twitter, for the project as well. And the other thing that people have been asking me for is a Discord. Once again, it's just me doing all these things, so I have to make a Discord and add in all the information, you know what I'm talking about. But yes, I have all this stuff coming. I have not forgotten about the project. I have just so many other things going on, including this channel, and it's just a lot. I, um, yeah, at the moment, Bitcoin is currently at $62,074. It is up by 2%. Weird weekend dips happening over and over. Ethereum is currently at 4,300. That's still crazy to see Ethereum at 4,000 all the time. Binance Coin is at 529. Solana is up by 10%. It is very close to becoming coin number four. I could totally see it becoming coin number three. I'm not exactly sure, but I mean, I think Binance Coin would start trying to pump before that actually took place. Polkadot is up by 5%. Shiba Inu is up by 10% at the moment. Dogecoin is number 10. Anything insane or crazy happening right now? Everything is trying to do that little move up that Bitcoin is currently doing. Filecoin is up by 4. Phantom is up by 6. 
Decentraland is down by 17. It's back in the top 50. Uh, when Facebook announced that they were going to be launching their metaverse, every metaverse coin, Decentraland is one of them, skyrocketed. Some of them, I think the lowest was around 20%, and other ones went up by around 100%. Uh, but as the hype is no longer permeating the air as it once was, uh, prices for these um, metaverse coins have begun to slide back. But, you know, what have you. The graph is up by 10%. Rune Chain, Thor Chain is up by 19 IOTA is still number 49. Look at them. Look at them. Still up by 6.7%. And quant is up by 1% at this moment. Yeah, I'm I'm interested, and I'm sure all of you are as well, to see exactly what happens this year, because we've been told a lot of things about the prices, and let's see if they start happening. I do hope that you all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.